to my channel. I've got a really special, special, special video that I put together for you guys. I am going to be sharing with you three Valentine's Day inspired recipes. I've got a starter, I've got a main, and of course I've got a dessert. There's definitely a sweet theme with these recipes. I've attempted to keep them as simple as possible, yet of course so delicious and impressive. If you guys happen to try out these recipes, whether it be for somebody else or of course cooking for yourself, you can impress yourself, um, let me know how it goes in the comments section below. All of the recipes can be found in the description box below. Let's get straight into the first recipe recipe which is a starter. Let's go. So for the starter we are going to be making some purple and golden beetroot bruschetta. So simple and a guaranteed hit I promise. We are going to need some purple and or golden beetroot, some garlic, some red onion, fresh rosemary, fresh basil, balsamic vinegar, some olive oil and some thick chunky slices of bread of choice. So place your raw beetroot in some boiling water and cook until soft, it will take around 30 minutes. Rub the slices of bread with a fresh garlic clove. So place the slices of bread onto a pan, if you have a griddle pan that will work even better. And drizzle on some olive oil, just heating the bread on a very, very low heat. I also chose to scatter over a little bit of fresh rosemary and cook the bread until it was golden on both sides. Once the beetroot is cooked, peel and chop it into very small cubes Follow on by chopping up some red onion and some garlic very, very finely. In a mixing bowl, add the chopped beetroot, the red onion, the garlic, the freshly chopped basil, some sea salt and some black pepper, drizzle on some olive oil and a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Mixing everything really, really well. The last step is to place the beetroot on top of the bread, which will be garlicky and rosemary infused. So, so delicious. So place the beetroot on top of the bread. And I chose to drizzle on a little bit of pomegranate molasses just to top it off. That is totally optional. Don't worry if you don't have it, it will still be just as delicious. So the main meal is a butternut squash risotto with king oyster scallops. So to make this delicious risotto, you are going to need some risotto rice, some butternut squash, garlic, shallots, some fresh sage, coconut milk, vegetable stock, white wine of choice, and some king oyster mushrooms. So to begin with, finely chop the shallots and mince the garlic and finely, finely chop the fresh sage. So cut the butternut squash into half, scooping out the seeds. Rub down with a little oil if you want to and place flat on a baking tray. Place the butternut squash in a preheated oven of around 200 degrees for around 40 minutes until the squash is really soft and oozing with sweetness. So scoop the flesh out of the squash, placing it in a blender or a food processor. And add some garlic powder, followed on by some onion powder, a pinch of chili flakes and some coconut milk, blending everything until smooth. In a large frying pan, heat some coconut oil on a medium heat, placing in the shallots and the garlic. So stir the shallots and garlic until golden and place in the risotto rice. So at this stage, we want to just toast the risotto rice for around one to two minutes. Go ahead and add a generous amount of black pepper and pink salt, followed on by some dried sage and some dried oregano. So go ahead and add the white wine to the saucepan. Making risotto entails a lot of stirring you are going to have to be standing over that pan, stirring, stirring, stirring. So stir in the white wine until everything is absorbed. So follow on by adding the vegetable stock, preferably half a cup at a time. Continue mixing until everything has absorbed. This will probably take about 20 to 25 minutes. One cup at a time, begin to add the butternut squash puree, making sure everything is mixed in really well. So once the butternut squash puree has been absorbed and the risotto is cooked, go ahead and add some freshly chopped sage and give everything a mix. 
Now it's time to prepare the king oyster scallops. So chop the scallops into quite chunky pieces. I'd say you'd get about three to four pieces out of each king oyster mushroom. Heat a little bit of oil in a frying pan. I chose to use some fresh garlic, which I didn't really need because the risotto is filled with lots of garlic. But I basically fried these king oyster mushrooms on each side until golden brown, adding a little bit of sea salt and some black pepper. So once the king oyster mushrooms are golden and looking delicious, it's time to grab your plates and serve up your food. Placing the risotto on first, followed on by the king oyster mushrooms, and I chose to use a few pea shoots just to decorate and bring the risotto to life. So for dessert, we are making a lemon cheesecake, something so fresh and zesty and so, so delicious and easy to make. So you are going to need some soaked cashews, some lemon juice, some agave syrup, or you can even use maple syrup, vanilla extract, some coconut oil, some cacao butter, ground almonds, and some dates. So to make the base, otherwise known as the crust to our cheesecake, we are going to place some medjool dates inside a food processor followed on by some ground almonds, some desiccated coconut and some lemon juice. So blitz the ingredients until you get a sticky consistency. I used a 20 centimeter round springboard pan and I lined it with some parchment paper before placing in the base. If you don't have any parchment paper, just make sure you grease your pan, uh, whatever you're using, cake tin with some coconut oil. So I pressed in the base mixture, making sure everything was placed down flat and then it was time to make the filling. So over a bain-marie, melt some cacao butter. In a food processor, add the soaked cashews, followed on by some lemon juice, some agave, or you can use maple syrup, and some coconut oil, melted coconut oil, the melted cacao butter, and some vanilla extract. Blitz everything until smooth. You may have to stop the food processor just to scrape down the sides, uh, but yeah, blitz everything until it's totally smooth, and then pour the mixture over the base in the springboard pan, just smoothing out the top. So once everything is smoothed out, I covered the cheesecake with some cling film and I placed it in a fridge, letting it sit and set for at least four hours. So once the cheesecake has solidified and you're ready to serve it, you can remove it from the fridge, probably I'd say about half an hour before serving, and you can cut into whatever shape you want. I cut mine into square pieces and served it with some dried freeze strawberries as well as some fresh strawberries. So I wanna thank you guys just so much for showing love on my channel all year round. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave me a comment if you have anything to ask me, anything to say, and I will see you guys in my next video. See you, bye.